Hello, John Cena. How are you? I'm, I'm very good. good. It's, it's all good in your life. Uh, that's not true. That's not true. I do appreciate the good things, but life, everyone's life has ups and downs. Wow, we're deep in the first, like, ten yeah, seconds. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> okay. You play a smoke jumper. I do. Called The Soup. Yes. Had you ever heard of smoke jumpers before making this film? I had not, nor have I been given a nickname associated with food. So I learned that I could never be a smoke jumper because they are... Just a, they're just a different brand of thinker. They jump out of planes to fight these massive and control these massive fires. And they, they kind of live off the supplies that drop with them. They really, they're really uh, another level of, of hero. It's pretty special. It's so cool. Have you ever worn your costume out? No, uh, I have not worn the playing with fire costume out. Mm. Although I often wear the John Cena costume out. <laughs> does, that, does that go down well? Depends on the environment. It it uh, sometimes it'll it'll stir things up, and sometimes I'll be the talk of the town. <laughs> Love it. One I of think it's the jorts. I think that's that's the one thing that like either people are with or against. Like, mm. It's the jorts. Maybe that was a bad choice, bad fashion choice. But they're back. I think if you can pull off jorts, then you are the kind of ultimate human being. <laughs> Maybe a bit of a risk taker. I'd like to say a bit of a risk taker. Yeah. Mm. It's a bold move. Um, one of my favourite things is your facial expression throughout the film because you do that sort of deadpan, totally unimpressed thing so well. Does that take practice? Is it hard not to laugh at stuff? What do you mean? You're doing it now. It's creeping me out a little bit. <laughs> no, I just, uh, to, to be quite honest, I think if anyone watches WWE or knows me in real life, uh, I am very animated and uh, I do get excited about certain things. So it was literally like... That was the toughest thing, just having to be stern, stoic, emotionless, and let these really funny people do these extraordinarily funny things around you. Funny people such as Christian and Finley, mm -hmm. who are your very young co-stars, yes. who in the film were incredibly annoying. Are they incredibly annoying in general? Not at all. No. Not at all. They were adorable, absolutely adorable. Christian is wise beyond his years, and... A, there should be another word besides adorable to describe Finley. She's just great. You rate them? You think they've got big things ahead? I know. Christian's already done ten times the amount of films I've done. Like, that, he is so worldly, that kid, and, and just so really smart about everything. And his performance is great, and he's a good kid. Mm. You make it sound like he was your sort of onset agony uncle. Was he imparting advice to you? Uh, he, you were able to have a conversation with him, for sure. Absolutely. And he's, like I said, he's done a ton of films. So it was really cool to get his perspective on what he enjoys, what he looks for, like the projects that he, you know, he gravitates towards, how he feels about this. I could have that conversation with this, this young mind. It was really cool. That's quite impressive. Yeah. One of the, the key sort of source of humor in the film, we mentioned it earlier, is the fact that your character is just totally deadpan, doesn't want to show any kind of vulnerability or emotion. And that was kind of the takeaway for me. What would you want sort of boys watching this film to take from it? Well, the cool thing about the evolution of the character is um, my character learns to appreciate life through vulnerability, embracing the uncomfortable. Like instead of saying, I'm going to do this and it's, I'm, we're just going to do it my way, sometimes life throws you situations that are extremely uncomfortable. And to get through them, you have to push yourself out of your comfort zone. And doing that does take vulnerability. So... Uh, I don't think it's gender specific. I hope people take a message of it's okay to be vulnerable. And even if you're viewed as a hero to some, you become much more of a courageous person by letting your guard down and being vulnerable. You're so deep. I've been, <laughs> I've been looking at your, your socials. The Instagram, I think, is quite fun. Well, thank I like you, man. The, the random pictures with no context. You to None of them, it. nothing I ever do is random. I promise you that. <laughs> nothing I ever do is random. Okay, I'll be, I'll be looking for hidden meaning There's hidden meaning, meaning in every single okay. one of those. But also the Twitter, you love the deep quotes. Uh, I'm, those are actually just thoughts, thoughts of my own. Like, um, mm. So I use the two forms differently. Uh, I, I love, I've tried to create like a digital art gallery in Instagram and there's meaning with every post and I think it's cool when people try to interpret that meaning or give their thoughts. Basically, it's imagery that evokes conversation, which I think is pretty cool. And then Twitter, I almost use as a journal. And I even change the heading to be like some interesting perspectives and a little bit of self-promotion. Because mm. I'll tell people about the movie or things that I got coming up or things they should look for. But I also use it directly as a journal. Those thoughts come from 
who I am and what I'm feeling. And I'm basically, each, each and every day, I'm trying to follow more and more people. And once again, everybody's like, seen as random following people. Like, I don't follow anyone at random. They're all chosen because they've uh, either retweeted or liked those thoughts, those images. And I'm trying to create a community that every once in a while will look at something from a, a level of self-improvement. They say like social networking is, the, is such a place for negativity. I just am doing my two cents to try to add, to balance the scales a little bit. That's great. Before I leave you, I have, I have one thought for you. Okay. A while back on the show, I got my listeners to send me in their own sort of takes on inspirational quotes. Okay. So what do you, what do you think of this? Okay. Hmm. Just because you're trash, it doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. That's actually awesome. You like? That's I. That's uh, from Charlotte. I I would just I would modify the first part, and I think I would just say, it's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Don't be afraid to do things that you can't. You know, like just calling yourself trash. I don't know how motivational that is. Depending, perspective is everything. Mm. But I, man, I love that. I love that. It's really good.